Well, hello again, YouTube. It's PD Two Finger. I'm going to be biasing a circuit that has some N channel J FETs in it today. So I thought I'd shoot some video for you. These are Argo brand cornstarch containers, and I keep, whenever I cut off an LED that has a lead, uh, like this came out of a computer, I save those. So, but that's my LED collection, and then I keep quarter inch jacks in this one. So, whenever I'm uh, doing a project and I need an LED, uh, I can grab one that's already got leads and shrink boot. And I like those containers. They're small. They're just about the right size for me, so I thought I'd pass that on. You use that cornstarch when you make your own Chinese food uh, or for, like, breading. You know, it's good stuff. So today we're going to be biasing this circuit. It's a, uh, you could think of it as a Fender preamp, like inside the guitar amplifier there's your volume gain bass mid-range and treble and that's kind of it gives it its tone uh that's what this is it's a modification on a fender so this is a laney which i think this is the same amp that tony iomi used with black sabbath so instead of using vacuum tubes it uses jfets which is a transistor which on paper behaves similarly to the way that a vacuum tube does so yeah like billy corgan he had a guy reverse engineer all of his most beloved amplifiers and instead of using tubes use these JFETs so you can run it off much lower voltages so the end result is he has a rack unit full of half rack amp heads so all of his favorite amps he's got collections of them just the preamp section done with JFETs and then there's a single power amp that goes for his cabinets so as he's able to instead of using pedals He's still using pedals, but he's able to pick all kinds of different amps without lugging all that weight of actually bringing the amp out. So, I mean, that's the luxury. He's a mega rock star. He can afford that. Me, I can afford to, you know, build these circuits. Thanks to the guys at Tag Board Effects, which is where I got these layouts. We built a Marshall 92 Super Bass is what it's called. Uh, this uh, It's basically similar. This one has two channels, a bass channel and a treble channel. And you would change those with a switch. You know, like, oh, I'm feeling saucy today. Let me try my treble channel. Ooh, I'm a little bit feeling blue. Let me kick on my bass channel. Anyway, the bass channel had a little hum to it, or maybe some less uh, gain. It sounded funky. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not an amp channel switching kind of guy. I want one sound that's reliable. And this is kind of big. So I rebuilt it in this version, which has volume, gain, bass, mid-range, and treble. It's simpler. It's less controls. So what we're going to do to bias it is basically adjust the amount of current that hits these JFETs. There's three of them. These are the amplifiers in the circuit. And um, one of them uh, is Q3. That one biases to 9 volts, so we're not going to mess with it. That's the actual supply voltage, 9 volts. The other uh, Q1 and Q2, we bias to half the supply voltage, which is 4.5 volts. So what you need is a good stable power supply that puts out just 9 volts. We're going to check mine. I bought this. It's a CB radio power supply that was set up at 12 volts, and I opened it up. There was an adjuster there, and I tweaked that adjuster to hit 9 volts. So let's see if we got any drift going on, if it's changed over the weeks. So it's reading at 9.01. That's where I had it. I had it set up at 9.01. Looking pretty good. So I'm going to disconnect that power connection there. We're going to go ahead and connect this to the ground. This is a cheap meter I got from eBay. Uh, I think it was... $12. And I like these uh, clip, this, these, you know, most of them, when you think of a multimeter, you think of it having test probes, the little pointy guys on there, like, like this. Well, you can order this, a set of these for 99 cents or two bucks. And then you can order a set of these. I like having both. So this is a test amp that puts out a sine wave. So I can show you what that sounds like. This is just to test my stuff when I build it rather than having to play my guitar through it 
Uh, you know, what if there's a problem? You're going to have to play your guitar and then go back to troubleshooting, play your guitar, go back. So this is just a tone. So here is the power wire for the circuit. And what we're going to do is just temporarily solder this up to our CB radio power supply. And I just hooked up the... So we'll just use some temporary tape here. This is just to make sure that we don't, oh, it's not even really soldered on there. Wow. <laughs> let me, let me do this right. Put a little flux on there. We got it. How do you like that? Tune in. <laughs> the thrills, the spills, and the spills. So we've got one more wire here. You know, ideally I would have a uh, clips, clippies. And we, we've got some. We ran out of these, these clippies, and I'm going to need to... set this up with a pair of clippies because I'm going to be using this again. So here we have our circuit is powered up and I've set all of the volume controls to zero which why am I not getting anything? Oh, maybe Why am I not getting anything? Well, uh, let's see where we're biased at. I, be I believe you should have your... Oh. We're not getting anything because the volume was turned down. When you bias the circuit, you should turn all of the uh, controls to zero. Now, I've, I read that... <laughs> I read that on, on one particular circuit or a few, few different circuits I've read that. They don't always mention that. Um, so is that the case? I know that if you, if you bias them both on this circuit and then you turn the gain and the volume all the way up, the number changes by 0.2 on Q2. So it does affect it. So I'm going with, hey, you know what? In order to bias this, I need to bias it with the volume set at zero. That's what I'm going. But to show you, I'm going to turn the volume and the gain all the way up. And we've got nothing. Right now, Q1 is biased at full 9 volts. So we're going to go ahead and up. See that? As soon as we, as soon as we got in there below like... 8.1 so this trimmer is really it's not a multi-turn trimmer it's just kind of the really cheapest ones you can get and one little nudge of it is going to send the number cascading down through quite many tens of values so there we're at 4.4 we're going to switch over to Q2 and see where we're at we're at 3.7 And you can see how the it's it this as I'm biasing it, it affects the uh, timbrality or the tone of the circuit. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. Did you see the number plummet when I turn the gain down? So we're going to go ahead and rebias this at four. And again, you know, I ideally when I finish with this amp and I'm playing it through. The speaker cabinet that I will be using rather than this tiny little test amp. Um, I will probably come in here and play with these one more time and, and see how does it sound if I miss bias? If I run it off of three volts. 
better than. So right now we're at 3.53 on Q. 4.53 on Q2. Let's go over to Q1. Q1 is right on. So let me go back over to Q2. See if I can. Am I going to obsess over this point? Oh, two. See, I, I didn't even move it. I was just nudging it. And that's that's the thing about these. Uh, this style of trim pot. There's the, the rectangular ones, multi turn trimmer that are, they're like a dollar and a quarter, where these will be like 24 cents or something. So that's it for biasing. I want to stress just a few things. Number one, with the end channel J fit, you always bias off the drain. So that's if you're looking at it at the flat part of the active, the transistor with the three legs sticking down. Uh, left to right, one, two, three, leg one would be the drain. If it says F on it and a Fairchild, you know, that pin out, they're all different. You need to check your pin outs with JFETs. They're probably wrong. If you bought them on eBay, they're counterfeit. <laughs> anyway, yeah, when you when you do this process, it's off the drain. That's where you're going to want to do it. And what I like to do is I'll just add an extra wire to the circuit. This wire here goes straight through. There's no cuts on this row. Um, so there's the drain. This one is inverted. It's flipped upside down as opposed to this one. The drain's on the top. And I went ahead and cut this wire in here just for ease of access. I mean, I, if I didn't cut that wire in there, I could come in and solder wire on top of it or pull the clip on the top just for ease of no hand for no handed uh, operation. I'll just cut in a wire. And then when I'm done, I'll unsolder that and remove it. So we always, on an end channel JFET or a J201 or a 2WAN5457, MPF102, those are the popular ones for guitar pedals for JFETs. Uh, we always, buy, but we always buy, adjust the bias on the drain. You can cut in your own wire. It's good to use a, a stable power supply that you know runs at 9.0 volts. Uh, anything off of there, you know, you can always compensate in your, your numbers. Like, let's say you're running it at 9.1. Well, that could be 4.55 would be biased at half. But if you can, it makes your life easier. And, I mean, if you really want to go crazy with it, are you sure that your meter is running right? But then again, is it going to make that much of a difference? Probably not. You only start hearing it when you're getting in the 1 or 2 volt out of. And sometimes, in the case of the fuzz face, silicon fuzz face circuit, I like it misbiased. You know, that's the fuzz factory it has a knob where instead of having a little trimmer, you just adjust it right on the front panel by ear. So there's something to be said about that. Uh, two different approaches. Me, I'm more from the school where in an amp with JFETs, I want it biased properly because the misbiased JFET sound is not a thing, I don't think. We'll see. I may. I noticed that running this at reduced voltages brings up the gain, brings up the high frequencies. So that's something that's good to know. In the end, uh, that's kind of not the point of this video. I just wanted to show you how I buy some JFETs. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I always like to try to remember to say good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Peace.